you know, 20% of the patients in the Bialy C trial with RSC um, did have prior HMA exposure, but I'm not convinced, Gail, that that's enough to explain the lower response rate and the shorter median survival of um, the uh, venetoclax combination with RSC than HMA. So that's the primary criticism, that is that number enough? And I'm definitely not in any way trying to argue that the data are as robust as they were for the other study, not trying to argue that. However, I do think that the response rates, and again, having participated strongly in that study and watched the patients, the response rates are definitively better than for low-dose itarabine alone, which are pretty crummy. And there was enough benefit in patients as you go individually that one could imagine that it really was that short follow-up that prevented us from seeing the benefit. And we're trying very hard in a very rigorous academic way, Andrew and I are trying to work on this to see if there's any way to kind of prove that point that is this just a matter of the statistics or is it really not worth anything? And we're trying to answer that question as best as we can. There's, there's a nice figure, uh, Harry, in the, um, in the JCO paper of the phase two study, and they actually, you know, subtract out that, uh, th that subset of patients and then report the response rates. Uh, and this isn't survival, but just response rates for the patients who were truly treatment naive. And I mean, it's hard to compare apples to oranges, but you know, th there's a, there's certainly, it, it's in, it gets up into the close to the 60% range. So, you know, and, and then the other thing that may be a distinguishing feature, and, and Andrew uh, did a very nice talk about this at ASH uh, last year, is that it's perhaps the, the good subsets of patients who are highly responsive to, to venetoclax, the NPM1s, the IDHs, they seem to do uh, as well uh, with, with the low-dose acarabine. It's perhaps the, uh, the, the tougher patients, the more secondary AML or the complex cytogenetics of genetics or the genomically defined poor risk patients who aren't doing as well with the low-dose acarabine. So I think more time will tell, but there may be ways to tease that out. The other thing to do, and you're not supposed to mix and match these comparisons, but we do have the availability of a low-dose cytarabine-based regimen in combination with Blastigib, which has actually proven to be a little bit difficult for discussion. People aren't exactly sure what to do there. It does not look competitive with respect to these newly diagnosed patients who were treated with Azaven. But again, trying to just understand that there are some patients, or are there some patients for whom a low-dose cytarabine-based regimen would be something that you wanted to try and trying to answer the question of which one might you pick. It certainly seems that the venetoclax based um, with low dose um, cytarabine had much higher response rates. 